Joining us now, Chewy CEO Sumit Singh. Uh, welcome. So uh, last quarter, you talked about a slight decline in active customers because of some macro headwinds. This quarter, you're talking about a Canada expansion. What's happening with active customers and spending patterns in this inflationary environment? It's consumer. Sorry, I have, uh, okay, can you start again? I just got your audio. Yep, yep, yep. It's nice to nice to be here, John. Good to see you. What we're seeing, John, is an engaged consumer, right? Our platform and the value proposition that we deliver is resonating loudly. And so you asked me two questions. One, active customers. Our active customers are steady. You know, we're acquiring customers higher than, on a gross ads basis, higher than what we were uh, during the pre-pandemic times. And our large cohorts that we acquired during the pandemic, we're seeing steadying, you know, from an attrition point of view. So overall, we're seeing steadying active customer base, which is a, a great sign for us to be uh, observing right now. And on, at the same time, when you look at customer engagement as measured by share of wallet or net sales per active customer, that number is up 15% year over year, crossing the $500 mark. So what you're seeing is a large base of customers consolidating their wallet share to a platform like Chewy. And, and the proof point is in the 15% year over year growth, John. You know, when you look at the pet category, the category grew at about 7% and we grew at more than two times that rate taken market share. Uh, well, I've got a cat that we got during the pandemic and we're keeping her, right? But I'm concerned about some of these other people who might have picked up pandemic pets thinking they were going to work fully remote, especially dogs. And now, uh, you know, th that might not be panning out. What are you seeing in this newer cohort's behavior? Are they staying steady in what they're purchasing? Are they trading down to more affordable brands? Uh, are you needing to expand into areas like insurance to, to get the most value from your customers overall? Yeah, so we're seeing, we're seeing tremendous levels of engagement, John. So if you look at our revenue, it's comprised of multiple categories, consumables and health, which are non-discretionary categories, where, which is like food and you know, your healthcare needs, you know, comprises roughly 85% of our revenue in Q2. And those are tremendously resilient categories, which we fulfill with great deal of joy and pride to consumers. There, we're seeing no trade down at all. So to the extent that consumer stickiness is concerned, both on the platform and across these categories, we're seeing tremendous resilience. At the same time, you mentioned insurance. So we have a growing portfolio of healthcare ecosystem. And this quarter, we're announcing the expansion of our insurance plans with two scale providers. We're bringing on Lemonade, and we already had Trupanion on the platform. So what that means is, you know, we are now commercially even more ready to go to market with greater price points approaching a wider range of customers. So overall, you know, the proposition of uh, competitive pricing, great assortment, delivery convenience, and the personalized service that we take to market is very much intact. So, what does that do uh, to your overall customer loyalty and churn numbers? When you get people across multiple uh, uh, product and service categories, they're buying food, maybe they're buying some furniture, or I don't know, clothes even, but they're also buying insurance. You know, Amazon, the likes of them, have talked about how uh, Amazon Prime and those subscription services drive product purchases. Are you seeing that kind of pattern as well? We absolutely are. If you look at, if you let me let me share two data points with you. So here's what happens at Chewy. So we have, you know, our subscription product is called AutoShip, and this quarter in Q2, nearly 75% of our revenue went through this recurring, repeatable subscription service, right? And AutoShip program has higher average order values because the attach rates that we see with AutoShip, with people combining food and meds and other like toys and treats, it's just higher relative to, you know, the non-AutoShip members. That's one. Two, John, what's helpful to understand about Chewy is that our customers, you know, over a period of two to three years, end up consolidating their entire share of wallet over to a platform like Chewy. So year one, they'll spend consistently about $100, $150. Year two, that jumps sharply to close to $300. Our oldest cohorts that are from 2011, 12, 13, they're spending north of $1,200 on the platform right now. So when you, when you combine that statement with the power of the fact that our average share of wallet is 500 bucks, 
Hmm. And we have 20 over 20 million customers on the platform spending an average of 500, but the oldest cohort spending nearly 1200 with the lifetime value being closer to 14, 15, 1600 dollars. Yeah. You can see the massive amplification that is just built into the platform as customers consolidate share of wallet. That's okay. one of the prime reasons why Q2 revenue is, is as strong as it or Q1 revenue was as strong as it is.